everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Castiel Talks. I have a new game that I am sharing with you all today. It is hitting Kickstarter next month. Very cool filler game. Plays two to three players for about 30 to 45 minutes called Gadgeteers. Gadgeteers is by Lettyman Games, and the story behind it is all of the players are inventors, and they're bidding in secret kind of, bluffing kind of, on parts to use to build gadgets. The gadgets are worth points at the end of the game. There's other ways that you can earn points as well. And the game is a really cool one. I like it a lot. Let's go ahead and check it out. Gadgeteers by Lettyman Games. All right, everybody, this is Gadgeteers. I have it set up here for two players. And the story of Gadgeteers is each of these players is an inventor using their tokens to bet on parts in the game. The parts are later going to be used to buy gadgets. And at the end of the game, the gadgets are worth victory points. At the beginning of the game, each player selects a screen that they want to use and corresponding tokens that match the screen's art and color. For example, here is the purple screen and purple tokens. Players are then given a secret bonus objective, which tells the player how they can gain extra victory points at the end of the game. In a two player game, four gadgets are placed out on the table and the gadgets show how many victory points they're worth at the end of the game, what parts a player needs to control in order to build that gadget, and what kind of special power, if any, the gadget has that can be used once a player has built it. The first player token is given to the youngest player, and the youngest player begins the game by taking one of their tokens and placing it on a part that they are bidding on to control. Players are given tokens numbered one through five, and then another token that has this little power icon. Players may use whichever token they'd like to place on these parts to bid with. However, once the phase ends and players choose to take tokens off of the parts, any tokens that have the star next to them are removed from the game. If at the end of the game, players still have their tokens that have star on them, they're worth one point each extra. The power token is a special token that allows players to use that special power I showed on the gadget card. I'll explain how that's used a little later in the game. The first player is now ready to begin their turn. They look at all of the gadgets on the top. They decide that they want to build this gadget because they have this bonus card, which will help them get bonus points at the end of the game. So they decide to take a two and place it on the lens tile, like so. The token is placed face down, so the other player can't see what amount that player has used to bid. Now it goes to the other player, and they choose a token to place and a part that they want to bid on. This player's bonus objective is for these dark green colored cards. The dark green colored gadget that's on the table also uses the lens part. So to play it safe, they bid a four, which is a high number, and if they win, they won't get this token back, but they'll definitely get to use the part. The token is placed face down so that this player can't see what they've bid, and now it goes back to this player's turn. Turns go back and forth until all players have placed five tokens on the tiles. Once players have placed all five of their tokens, they move into the next phase, which is called the gadget phase. Starting with the first player, we look at what parts they have control of. The first player has control over the tape, as they are the only ones that have a token on the tape. Same thing with the pipe, but then we come to the gear. Both players have placed a one, which means there is a tie, therefore neither player gains control of this part this round. We now move to the lens. Orange player placed a two and a one, which equals three total points on the card. However, the yellow player placed four, which makes them have control of the part. Because the first player did not get the tape the pipe and the lens needed to build this gadget, they pass turn. Now we go to the second player. The second player has gained control of the propeller. They don't use the boots because they have the power token on them. However, the power token will let them use a gadget they build this turn if they can do so. They also have control of the lens and control of the magnet. The second player decides they're gonna build this one, the hypno spin. Because they have control over the lens, and the propeller, what they do is they take their tokens off of both of those tiles and they build this card. Tokens come off, and because they used a four that has a star on it, they do not get this token back into their play screen area. It goes out of the game. The second player then takes their gadget, places it in front of them, and they decide to activate this special ability by taking the power token off of the boots and putting it back behind their screen. The special ability is a single use, and it says, turn a token on a part face down. Because right here, they don't have majority, they decide, you know what? I'm gonna turn my opponent's token face down. It is ignored until the end of this round. Now that they have built and used their power up, turn goes back to the first player. 
However, the first player chose to pass, so they do not get to do any additional actions this phase. Second player now looks at what they have control of, the gear and the magnet. The gear and the magnet right here would give them the gadget. However, they no longer have control of the boots as they took their power token off of the tile. Second player then chooses to pass turn. Now that both players have passed, we refill the gadgets. If no gadgets had been built that round, we would add one more to the table. And now first player gets to decide if they'd like to take their tokens off of any tiles. They decide they're going to keep theirs on the lens and the pipe and the tape, but they're gonna take it off of the gear. Second player decides they're gonna leave all of their tokens on their tiles. Once all players have had a chance to take their tokens back from the tiles, it signals the end of the round. First player token is then passed to the next player. A new round begins and this player gets to choose what tokens they wanna to place on what parts. The game continues back and forth this way, going through the five rounds of the parts phase, then the gadgets phase, and the game ends once a player has built their fourth gadget. Players then add up the victory points of the gadgets they've built, plus one point for each token with a star on it that they didn't use, and any additional victory points they got from their bonus objective. That's Gadgeteers. So that was Gadgeteers by Lettyman Games. One of the reasons I really liked Gadgeteers is not only because I like two player games, I often find myself with only one other person, but I like games that don't require too much strategy and this, you know, with bluffing games and it's almost like a press your look kind of because you don't know if the other player is going to bid higher than you and you don't know, you know, with the bluffing aspect what they're bidding. And I like games that don't require a lot of crazy intense strategy. You don't have to have played the game a bunch of times. so. Those are all really awesome reasons why I think you should check out Gadgeteers. If you like Gadgeteers and you want to check it out, it's going to be on Kickstarter next month on August 16th. You can also check out the links down below to learn more about Gadgeteers by Letting Men Games. If you like this video and you want to see more of my videos, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And I also have my website, CassieL.com, where I have more written reviews about cool games just like this one. That's Cassiel signing out with Gadgeteers by Letting Men Games. <laughs>